what exactly is like if I'm going from renting to homeowning, mm-hmm. I know nothing about home ownership. Why is there a difference between renters and like homeowners policies? Yeah, the big jump for a renter to a homeowner is when you're a renter, the only thing you cover in a renter's policy really is what you own, mm-hmm. right? So maybe I have 10 grand worth of stuff in the house that I'm renting, maybe a sofa, sure, maybe a bed, right? Laptops. Laptops, jewelry, that, that type of thing. thing. Okay. That's the important thing you want to cover as a renter. When yeah. you jump to a homeowner, now you are actually on the line for what you just bought, right? So right. the structure of the home, what's inside of it now is probably a lot more because you're having to furnish the whole house, refrigerator, washer, dryer, Mm -hmm. your personal property. And then there's now an added element of loss of use. Maybe you can't live in the home for a certain period of time. Who's going to pay your mortgage Mm -hmm. and also a liability risk as well, which comes into play a little bit. As you're a property owner, you're now liable for things you wouldn't be liable for as a renter. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Your porch collapses while someone's on it. Mm -hmm. You know, if that happened to you while you were renting, you'd shoot your landlord a quick text or call and be like, hey, you might want to fix this yeah. problem. By Someone way, just twist their ankle. Sure. You know? But now liability falls on you because you own the property. Yeah. So insurance comes into play for all those things. It's kind of like a next step up okay. for you. Yeah. Um, if I'm, if I'm, so I'm looking at this policy and I'm trying to figure out, um, I'm, I'm reading through the fine print. I'm trying to figure out like, what the heck is the difference between like rebuild cost and market cost? And it, it, it's confusing. Again, yeah. I'm looking through this first time. How do I make sense of this? Yeah. The biggest question I always get is when I send someone an insurance quote, let's say you're buying a 3000 square foot house right. and I'm insuring it for 500 grand. Mm-hmm. You paid 800 grand for it. Mm-hmm. The first question is always, well, why is it not insured to 800 grand? The biggest reason that is, is because you bought it for market value, right? So yeah. that factors in land cost, that factors in location, market value. So sure. right now we're kind of an inflated real estate market or maybe coming out of it right now. Sure. Versus rebuild cost. So rebuild cost is I'm gonna insure your home for what it would take to rebuild it. If mm. we're completely knocked down, that's what insurance really is for. It's not to cover your purchase price of the home. A lot of people want that. But the thing is, people don't understand is if your home is not completely down, right? The insurance company is not going to pay you eight hundred grand. They're mm-hmm. going to pay the minimum it takes them to rebuild it. Sure. So it's going to take them five hundred grand to rebuild. They're not going to cover that extra three hundred grand mm-hmm. for no reason, just for fun. Yeah. Right. How does that work with um, so like my house built nineteen twelve, right? And some of the building methods and construction used then yep. isn't really even available today. Yeah. So like I've got triple brick you know, triple wide brick in some places in my house. There aren't a lot of masons that even know how to do that today. Yeah. So how does that work? That's a fantastic question. So we call that standard rebuilding mm-hmm. and vintage rebuilding. Okay. So a lot of, without getting into too much detail, a lot of carriers we quote with differentiate. Mm-hmm. So there's a standard model of rebuilding something that doesn't involve whatever you just said. Okay. I've never even heard of that. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Triple, triple wide triple brick. Triple wide brick. Yeah. It's basically and, structural masonry, right? Instead okay. of the, the stick, meaning the, the two by four yep. carrying the load, the brick is carrying the load. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So like the, the offices across the street, that's, that's structural brick masonry. all the way through. Yep. Brick all okay. the way through. Yep. Gotcha. So if you build your home with a, a vintage, and if you tell me as your insurance broker, hey, mm-hmm. when you go to estimate the rebuild cost of my home, I want it rebuilt exactly like it was in 1912. But I have to specify that as... Yeah, and usually okay. if you have a good insurance broker, they're going to ask you, they're going to say, hey, your home is built in 1912. Yeah. If we rebuild this thing, worst case scenario, do you want it rebuilt in a vintage way or do you want it standardized? Mm-hmm. Standardized is going to cost less. Yeah. As we progress throughout history, we've figured out yeah. cheaper ways to do things. Mm-hmm. It usually still looks the same. Sure. But it's not, well, you can maybe speak more to this, but I'm, I'm thinking if you build your home completely out of brick, it's going to probably last longer than if you build yeah, it otherwise. Yeah. Uh, in, in the construction world, you would, or, or even potentially, um, you would call it the pro forma. So like you're, when you're, a pro forma would be uh, a analysis of cost and like what, if I'm investing into something, what is like the, the years of ownership, the cost and then the return and that type of thing. Okay. Right. Yeah. And so um, you have what are initial costs and you have lifetime costs. Initial costs are, well, how much does it cost to build right now? Lifetime cost is how much does it cost to maintain or replace over a period of time? 
Slate Roof is a really good example of this. Buckingham Slate, it'll last 200 years. Yeah. Right? Right. Uh, three tab uh, asphalt shingles, 15. Yeah. Right? Especially, <laughs> especially if it's close to the ocean front, right? Yeah. Or if it's in a high, like, hail or rain, rain area. And so, yes, the asphalt three, three tab shingle is far cheaper at the beginning, but it has to be replaced more often and it requires certain maintenance. That's Buckingham Slate, yeah. it has a very high initial cost. But if it's maintained properly, can last over 200 years, and it, you know, basically a slate every now and then falls out, or some of the flashing details, metal work has to be done. Yeah. Um, so it, it, you're looking and evaluating. Well, all right. If I, as the homeowner, only have X amount of dollars, I may not have. Even if I can agree that the lifetime value or lifetime cost of slate is better, um, some of its aesthetic, you know, that type of thing, things that the specific look that you want. Right. Um, and, you know, it's prestige, I think, built into these. There's a reason people buy Mercedes over a Corolla. The Corolla gets you where you need to go, yeah. right? Um, so it, it comes down to the individual and what they're looking for and what their budget looks like. Yep, exactly. Exactly.